Today we will make an ant tunnel. I am starting off with a paper that is brown that is smaller than a white paper, some crayons, a sharpie. I will also be using some glue. Now the brown paper should be smaller than the white paper so that it fits inside of it when it's done. I'm going to crinkle it up to a small ball and then I'm gonna open it up again. And I think I'm gonna do that one more time. Crinkle it up. And then open it up again. So I've got a really good amount of wrinkles in the paper. And I wanna open it up and see if I can get it flat. I'll put it on my desk and now I'm gonna look for a brown crayon. Once I find a brown, I'm gonna turn it and color the paper on the side of the brown crayon. If yours still has the wrapper on, you could probably just color it regularly too, but I kind of like turning my crayon on the side to get all of this um, kind of filled in with a little bit of brown. You could also do this with oil pastels uh, if you already have the paper off of those. Once I got my paper, I'm going to go ahead and turn it up and down here and I'm going to start ripping the tunnels in my paper by pulling pieces off and then kind of laying them back out on the table. So you can see I've got a couple of pieces that I rip off and then I um, lay them kind of in the spot where I ripped them so that I don't lose my place here. And you can decide how many tunnels you have and kind of how or where they go. But this will make kind of the tunnel system for our ant tunnels. And what I'm gonna do is put these off to the side and try not to lose their spaces. And now that I have my white paper ready and my, my white paper is extra tall, um, I'm gonna start at the very bottom corner and I'm gonna just kind of lay out my pieces so that they actually go all the way to the edge of my white paper. You can leave a tiny border if you want, but you can see my tunnels are, are kind of a nice length or a nice width, I, would, I guess you would say. And I'm just kind of measuring this out so that it looks like that makes sense here. And then when I lay it out, it'll be easier for me to glue. So you can kind of get an idea of where it's gonna be. Now I'm using stick glue, but you could use liquid glue too, whatever kind of glue you have around. And I'm gonna turn my piece upside down here and then glue starting with the bottom edge of my um, dirt, I guess you would say, my ground. And then I'm gonna continue adding these pieces in to their correct area, uh, just one at a time, making sure that I leave enough space in between them so that I do have little tunnels, little pathways for my ants to go. So you'll really have to pay attention to the spacing of your pieces. So we know exactly where those ants can fit in between each one. I'm gonna go ahead and glue these down. Notice I'm going pretty much right to the edge of my white paper. It's okay if you leave maybe a tiny border, but I do want it to go all the way to the edge. So you have to kind of make them work here. See if you can get them to cooperate. I'm liking this so far. Go ahead and put this one in like that, right along the edge. I'm gonna add this one in as well. I'm just working my way up. And I really like this crinkled paper effect. I feel like it is really making it more of a believable ground. Notice my crayon's very uh, slight. You can see it just a little bit. I mean, you could get even fancier if you wanted to add little rocks or stones in your ground, but I'm keeping mine pretty simple. And I'm gonna to continue to fill up my page. Notice that my, my white paper was actually so long that I have some space at the top. And that's good because then I can add a ground, um, like above ground too, so. All right, I have 
all of my pieces connected here. They're all glued down. My tunnel system is complete. Now it's time to add some excitement. So I'm going to go ahead and move my paper and show you kind of how I want to fill up the tunnel here. So I'm going to use a Sharpie for my ants and I'm just going to use three circles. So one, two, and three. And the back two circles I'm going to color in and the first one I'm going to leave open so it looks like the ant has like a giant eye. And ants have six legs, they're insects, so I'm going to add six little legs and an antenna. Now you can decide how many ants you have in your tunnel. I think I'm going to add some in each little passageway and they can be going down into the tunnel or they can be coming um, up out of the tunnel so you can decide what direction they're going and what they're doing. So I'm going to continue just making the three connected circles, keeping it very simple, adding six legs, adding antenna and an eyeball. These are more cartoony ants. If you want to make more realistic looking ants, you can do that too. I'm going to make one over here that's way down in the tunnel that needs to kind of come up and out. And you could even put multiple ants in one tunnel. It really is up to you. It's kind of fun trying to decide maybe where they're going or what they're doing. I think I am good with my ants for now. All right, I'm going to put my Sharpie down and I'm going to switch to crayons. And one of the first things I want to do is I want to add some grass because I want this to look like we are underground. So by adding grass way up here at the top, then it will make it look kind of like there is um, this tunnel kind of going down and I mean you could even make an ant hill if you want. I'm just leaving it open for now. But a lot of times ants have like a little ant hill at the top so that's something else you could think about doing. I'm adding another color of green for my grass just to fill up the top area of my paper. If you wanted to you could add flowers, you could add all kinds of things. Maybe your ants are hanging out um, from a picnic and they're carrying parts of the picnic down into their tunnels. I just have mine carrying greens and leaves, things like that, um, down into the tunnels so they have some things on their back. Remember that ants are actually the strongest insect. They can carry the most amount of weight um, and like a percentage to their own body weight. So you know, you can make some pretty large things if you can fit them in this tunnel. Um, some other things I'm adding are just little pieces of dirt or some other extra leaves, things that the ants are bringing down. So you can just kind of get creative and fill your tunnel with whatever things you would like to do. What have your ants brought into your tunnel? Are they just bringing things from nature like little leaves or sticks or um, ground or are they maybe invading a picnic or are they invading a birthday party and maybe they're bringing bits of cupcake or something down into the tunnel so see if you can get creative with what you add to yours I'm also just using a blue crayon really lightly right now of course to make a little bit of sky way up here on the top if it bothers you too that the tunnel is bright white you can always maybe add a little bit of brown to the tunnel too with crayon and that way it will look more like it's underground. Thanks so much for doing this project with me today. I hope you got very creative in designing your own ant tunnel. Please visit Elkie Art for more fun tutorials. Have a good one!